Hello and welcome to the Voice of Intuition podcast. My name is Susan Jane and I believe that trusting your intuition is the best way to live your life with meaning and purpose. Each week you will hear about how you can connect, develop and trust your intuition through the wonderful array of guests we have on the show and my own personal experiences. Join me to understand how your intuition can guide you towards a life full of meaning and loving purpose. Hello and welcome to The Voice of Intuition, the show that helps you connect with your intuitive nature. I'm Susan Jane, I'm your host for the show, and today we have a wonderful guest on. Now his name is Mark. Mark Nelson is his name. Now you're going to have to remember that name because it's really going to be good. We are going to be talking about psychic medium. Now Mark has done this for quite some time. He's going to give you all the details. Like I said, it's better for him to tell it um, because he can tell it right. I can only just guess. But um, he is going to go right down into what psychic mediums are, what what it's all about. The, the different tools that he uses, like psychometry, what is that? How do we do that? And I want you to get an understanding of all the, un, the, the, the elements of what psychic medium is all about. Because when we have this understanding, when you do go to pay someone to do a reading for you, you have an understanding of what you want to get out of it. Because we, we need to be mindful of that. It, it's too easy to hand over money and not get what we want out of it. So with this, you're going to get a lot of learning, a lot of understandings, and Mark is going to be there to stand by you to make sure you get the best out of what you need to do. Did that make sense? Yes, I think it did. Anyway, <laughs> let's introduce Mark into the show. Hi, Mark. How are you going? Susan, hey, it's nice to be here. Thank you. It, it's great. And uh, I love, I mean, I just love where you go with the show. I appreciate it. It's just so exciting. So I hope I can be of help to the people who are listening to your podcast. Oh, you will be. Don't worry. I'm going to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make sure. Uh-oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be good. I promise. <laughs> They're the rules. Um, so, Mark, it was. it's lovely to connect with you. Thank you for being on the show. That's, you know, one of the main things, too, because it's, it's lovely that you can share your knowledge and your understanding. You have an amazing background with this. And I want the people to get a, a bit more of an understanding of who you are and how you got to where you are now. So would you like to share a little bit of your story, please? Sure. Well, um, I'm, my name, I go by Mark Christopher Nelson because there's so many Mark Nelsons out there. I mean, there, there, you throw a rock out a window and you will hit someone named Mark Nelson. So I go Mark Christopher Nelson. <laughs> um, and I have a, um, I, I've been, I read for people around the world, basically. I have clients from Australia to um, UK to Eastern Europe to Mexico. I've read, I mean, China, Asia. I mean, I've been really blessed by that. But it didn't start out there at all. In fact, I didn't know I was psychic uh, for, um, I mean, mo my early years. But uh, it actually, I learned about my psychic ability through a tragedy. When I was uh, 11 years old, my father was killed in a holdup. And he, uh, we, he went to work one day. He didn't come home. And then uh, we tried to cope with it as best as we could. We didn't really have a great system for it. There were no um, counselors around for the most part. It was just family trying to sort it out, get through this shocking development. It, and also, too, I've come to recognize that losing someone suddenly is very different from losing them uh, over time. You get a chance to be prepared. We weren't prepared. We didn't know what was coming. But um, anyway, a month after my father's funeral, I'm 11 years old. I'm trying to act as if everything is normal because I don't know what else to do. And I start raking leaves and I'm uh, because it was fall where we were. And I look up and I see my father standing in the driveway and he looks solid. I mean, I wasn't trying to examine him for the, the greatest details, but he looked solid. He looked real. And all of a sudden, all I could think of was I'm losing my mind. I have no point of reference for this. I don't understand how to deal with it. And he's smiling and, and I hear him say, I'm okay. I'm okay. And then you will be too. And then he just smiled and disappeared. And I, I had to remind myself to breathe. So, and then I saw him again at my school another time. I'm trying to pay attention in class 
and everyone thought I was this daydreamy kid. That's how they described me. Well, I look uh, over and to the side of my uh, out the window, and I see my father again. I'm just okay, Dad. I don't know if you're here, why you're here. I don't know how to handle this. Please go away. And so he did uh, for a couple of decades. Flat, um, flash forward, I have a career where I work as a writer. Uh, my wife and I bought a house. We have a little girl, and I'm just thinking to myself, I wish my dad could have met my wife, Barbara. And then I hear this voice in my head say, um, I have. And so all I can think of is, okay, so this is the onset of uh, schizophrenia. I mean, I really, <laughs> what do I know? You know, this is, what it's, this is what schizophrenia looks like. Great. This is great. I'm firsthand experiencing it. Then I, but I, I gather myself and I say, if you really are dead, tell me something I don't know. And this voice says, your brother Glenn is surrounded by green ivy and white walls. To me, that sounds like, you know, spy talk. You know, it's like the, the moon is green and over Belgium. I mean, I don't know. But my brother Glenn actually lived on the other side of the country from me at the time. And he was near my mom. So I called up mom and I said, I had a dream about Glenn being surrounded by green ivy and white walls. Does that make any sense? She goes, that's so funny. He just got a job at a place called the Green Ivy. And in fact, it, it's a floral shop and it has white walls and green ivy and basically as you described. So my thought is, OK, I heard that voice. I know I heard it. Why did I hear it? How did I hear it? And so I took another walk. And that's really when I heard this. I was out taking a walk, kind of collecting myself. And so I think I was, it was kind of, med I didn't realize it, but I was slipping into a meditative state. And so um, in walking and it was quiet. So I basically said, if dad, you're there, can you speak to me again and give me other information? Because, uh, I mean, it's nice to think you're having a conversation with someone, but it's, a, it's an entirely different experience when you recognize that um, someone in spirit is speaking to you and telling you something that you don't know. So that was my experience. And then I got other messages about other family members. And so I'm thinking, okay, I'm hearing dad. I'm, I've had several confirmations that uh, the information, information I'm receiving is real. So what do I do with this? And so I began to wonder, is this something that is just for me and my family? If it is, that's wonderful. Or is this something else? Uh, there's something else to it. And I was also trying to figure out, how did I do this? I mean, I wasn't setting out the goal. I'm now going to develop my intuitive ability, my psychic ability. I wasn't setting out to do that. So I had to kind of examine my state of mind, where I was. And then I began to see, okay, there's a pattern here. When I'm very focused on, on one thing, uh, I can receive messages from dad. But I became very curious as to whether I could receive messages for other people. So I basically stumbled into a, um, a psychic bookstore where they had psychics on staff who would read for people. And uh, it just sounds ridiculous, but I just basically walked in and said, I think I'm psychic. Can I try reading somebody? And the manager was like, sure, go ahead, read me. And so I, I did, but that, and my process for clearing my head and getting to a place where I could receive uh, information um, was overly complicated at first because I didn't know any better. But then I still I was able to sit down, collect my thoughts, relax, be alert, um, and be relaxed at the same time. And so, and also to to accept what I received. I mean, that's all I really do is I wait to see. Who is giving me information? What is it that I am receiving? You don't go out and tackle it. You wait for it to come to you. So um, with this manager, I heard, okay, a uh, woman who had, you have a son, and he was just beat up by some young guys. Um, they, they had a, a disputed school, but they beat him up pretty badly. And now your father is staying at home with him um, to basically help him while you're working. And she goes, that's exactly right. Would you like to read for us? And I was just like, oh, sure. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm the accidental psychic medium. I just, I mean, and I didn't know psychic or medium. I mean, I, I can tell you what that really means. But so 
she scheduled me for a few hours. And then so the, the, the nerves I had about sitting down for the first time, you know, and having a client that I didn't know, sit down and talk to me. And the thing that got me through it was, okay, I'm going to be uh, relaxed. I'm going to be clear. And I also still do to this day something. I have a little journal I keep next to me. And so it's my way of kind of um, winnowing down, bringing uh, the messages I received to something in of an orderly fashion. I write notes. I have a journal. So I started writing things down about someone I didn't know who was going to sit. But this person came in, sat down, and I began to read for um, a, a group of people. And it was just like, oh, my God, I, I'm just out doing I'm doing this. I'm not sure how I'm doing it. I mean, I read one book about someone who had a similar experience, but I was very much um, not aware of the what you needed to do. I, I literally just kind of stumbled into it. But then I, as I began to use this ability, I began to recognize, OK, um, meditation is very helpful. Meditation gets me out of worrying about um, my family, uh, what I'm doing with writing, how I, you know, in, interact with other people. Really, the idea is to be very available, to be present is how I describe it. And I recognize that um, being able to meditate, clear my head, allows me to be in that position to receive messages. So I went from sitting in a little bookstore and then I started to get kind of busy. And then I thought, all right, maybe I should try reading. I wonder if it would be different at another bookstore. So um, and I went to another bookstore and that became busy. And then I began to think, I wonder if I could read. People were asking me, hey, can you do phone? Can you do phone readings? It's like, I have no idea. <laughs> How does that work? Okay, well, I'm going to try it. You know, And if it blows up in my face, then the answer will be no, you can't. But as it turns out, I actually prefer it now. So I sit and I clear my head. I light a candle. And the reason why I light a candle, it's not for any ceremonial purpose per se. It's more about I'm going to focus on one flame. I'm going to focus on the little flickering light. And so I begin to do this. And so uh, I start to read. I mean, I, I meditate. And then everything else, all the other worries of the day kind of drift away. All the other focus points, all the other little things. Then I'm, and when the phone rings, I am prepared, I'm relaxed. And I've learned that it doesn't matter whether I'm sitting uh, two feet away from my client or 10,000 miles, because in spirit, um, where I'm receiving the information, it there is no real sense of time or distance. Oh, well, I, I've, I've got to just jump in, Mark. You have just given us so much information. I've, I've got so many questions I want to ask, sure. and I'm going to give them all. You watch. Um, <laughs> One of the things I do I, I do want to talk about is um, so you've you've gone from there to there. You you've really given us a good understanding of of how you work your your gift, your tool, what, whatever it is you you want to call it, what it, what you like to call it. Now, when you're saying you're hearing messages, because that's what you first did, you saw you saw your father and you were hearing messages. Mm -hmm. Can you just elaborate? Like you, you said when you saw them, they were very, very solid. You saw him as very solid. Um, now, when we see TV shows and everything else, we see it as a ghostly sort of a figure. Mm -hmm. Can you just sort of elaborate the, the, those two for me a little bit more, just so we've sure. got a better understanding? Absolutely. Well, I've seen uh, my dad look very solid. I've seen a full body apparition before. And that was different. I was at a, a relative's home and she appeared to me and she had appeared to me because I'd been reading in her, in the home where she had passed transitioned. And so I was reading for her family and she was coming through and had all these details. And it was almost like she said, thanks, here I am. And it was a little shocking because I wasn't really prepared for it. But when I say I hear them, um, the, the truth is, is that if you do have this ability it depends. It's a two-way street. If someone I'm reading for wants to present themselves physically, I can see a little movie. If someone wants to just whisper in my ear, I'll get just that sound, their voice. And so in my person, through my personal experience, I see people in spirit. They tend to, they look very real. They look pretty, uh, 
of this world. And then they just kind of go away. I've also had it in my head where it's like, I don't know how I know this. I just know this. And I see someone doing something. I see someone running across like little movies is how I describe them. I see little movies where someone is running across a field. They get shot. They pass. Makes me think, okay, there's someone passed in a very violent manner. I also have uh, my spirit guides have something of a shorthand for me. Say, for example, I see someone who sits and I start sketching star. Okay, it's a star. It's a law enforcement or, or um, armed services. So, okay, so the person here is coming from, uh, they have a military background. They are showing me a star. I've had people that often veterans go into uh, law enforcement because they're comfortable in that very physical, uh, sometimes uh, physically challenging environment. So I see them all. I see pictures, words. I hear things. I hear things in other languages, and it's really amazing. So when you, you, you as you said, you saw your father as a, as a, a, I know this sounds a bit strange, but as a solid object. You saw him as you would normally see your father. Or a parent I would or say a how about ninety percent solid. Oh, I mean, okay, I think right. It's like so what, the, what the do you call of him was there, but I was so mesmerized by his face and his countenance his physicality yeah. i i can't say that he looked as if he just walked up to me solid as can be he okay. i see him. It, was, yeah. it was as if the, the little edges of him were perhaps a little fuzzy fuzzy okay so what then you said you saw an apparition what is the difference you you like your is it the same thing is an apparition different to say how you saw your father um, that's a great question. I would say that they're very similar. Mm -hmm. uh, the lady I saw, my wife got up in the middle of the night. Our daughter was crying in the other room. She gets up and walks away, says, I'll get her. I'll take care of her. Okay. And so I'm sitting up in bed. I know uh, my wife, Barb, will be back in two minutes. So I sit up and I kind of, I look down and then I look up and there's a, an older woman in a little nighty, and she's smiling at me and she's standing there and I'm looking at her going, Hello, who who are you? I mean, I was not in reading mode. I wasn't in um, medium mode. And again, yeah. she just looked at me and disappeared. And it was as if I got an electric shock. I was up and just, okay, I know I just saw her. I was talking to her. It wasn't a figment of my imagination. Then my wife comes back and says, why are you up? So I just saw, um, I, I can't remember this aunt's name, but I saw her. I don't even know what you look like. And then I went out and talked to my brother-in-law who was actually getting up. It was early in the morning and he was up early for work. I said, did your mother look kind of like this, this, and this? Yes. I just saw her. And so they, he said, uh, do you see? Oh yeah. She shows up. I said, well, you should have told me, you know, would have been, <laughs> nice, would have been nice to know, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So they can okay, be so very solid and very clear. Very Not clear, only, yeah. It yeah. also look like a, um, you'll get an outline. You'll see something that appears to be a little amorphous in terms of how it appears, mm -hmm. uh, a little unstructured, but you'll see um, a figure, a body, yeah. and, you'll, and, it, and it hits you. There's someone there. Now, with, with a lot of that, Mark, um, there is a lot of fear associated with that. Did you feel when you when you saw your father, when you saw this lady, was there a fear in it, or was it were you okay with that? It was surprise. I wasn't. Yeah. I didn't feel threatened. I, it just this was completely out of my normal experience. And I wasn't ready for this in the middle of the night. I wasn't ready for it when I was a little kid. Now when I see them, I'm just like, oh, there he is. Okay, yeah. I got you. I, I yeah. see who you are. And it's important that if you're, um, I've been asked to do a fair amount of paranormal investigating, which is something I actually do with my wife, Barbara. People recognize that I could hear and see things and they wanted to know that it translate to a home where say there was some spiritual activity. So in fact, it very much does. And uh, when when you see someone, it's, it's okay to say, okay, I see you. And then uh, very often, too, I'm out with a, a TV crew and or Barbara. And so I get uh, technical affirmation. There's a light. There's a there's you know, we're seeing orbs. We're seeing Barbara has this thing that we call shorthand an SLS camera. 
and it basically takes energy and forms it into stick figures. You may have seen it on some of the paranormal shows. But when I say there's someone there right in this place, point the camera there, and then it shows they point the camera there, and there's someone uh, who appears to be a stick figure person that just happened a cut that's happened a couple of times recently. Then yeah. that's a great validation. So and I when I see them there, I'll say, okay, I'm seeing someone in spirit. It looks like a guy. And then you get this stick figure and he's moving around. I've even had people like, can you wave to us? And they at the stick figure waved. That's wow. actually a couple, it's oh, can I tell you about another one like this? Um yep. Yep. I was reading for someone who was uh, in a coma. Uh, his sister was trying to figure out how to help him. And I wondered, at, because of my paranormal background, I wondered if I could read for him and if we put this SLS camera on him, whether we would see him having an out-of-body experience. And it turns out he was there basically waving, you know, expressing himself, being very um, present and responsive. Uh, and at the time he was lying on a, they had, um, this client of mine had his bro had her brother in a hospital bed in their home because of long-term care. Uh, she, this woman, my client also had her little boy there and a father there. And so I had um, a crewman because Barbara was with, with me. I didn't have the SLS camera. She wasn't there to do it. So we used an SLS camera from the crew that I was working with. And I say, I can you focus that on him? I think that there is someone here. And sure enough, there's this guy. Um, the, he was in spirit, even though he was in a coma. So that was actually a kind of a brand new world for us, where we it's one thing to deal with someone in spirit who's passed, but it's another thing to deal with someone who is in uh, kind of having an out of body experience. Yes, yeah, and um, I've, I've experienced that myself, but um, I love that the technical side of it, but I just do want the listeners to know that we are actually interviewing Barbara in a week or two's time or a couple of weeks' time. Um, so we're going to get a good understanding of that side of it too because I, I am really interested in that side of it. But but um, I've, I've always believed, and, and you've just sort of told me that, it, you know, like you've, you've actually witnessed it, but I've always believed that when somebody's in a coma that they are – it's because their physical, their spirit is still attached, but not necessarily in the body. It's sort of just, you know, not sure what it's doing. Um, a very good example of that. Uh, he, this guy was lying in a bed and he couldn't see like who was coming in and out of the room. There was, and it was, I was, oddly enough, I was doing this via a Zoom. Um, I love Zoom, but I was, I was in North Carolina. The client was in California and I'm reading for him. Uh, long distance on the Zoom camera. Mm -hmm. And then I, I get this message. Okay, someone in a, in a red shirt just entered the room. And there are people in the room. So how can you see that? It's dark in here. And then I realized that the guy in spirit is telling me this because it's not dark for him. He's right there. He can see yep. who it was. And it turns out that they, um, my client, uh, Jen's little boy, was wearing a red shirt. So I thought that was a pretty good indicator. And the idea is that he couldn't physically see him, not to, not to mention he couldn't talk, but he's telling me in spirit, okay, uh, there's, my, there's a little boy in red. And, and also too, I'm just picking it up as I go. Little boy yeah. in red shirt, someone in red shirt. And yeah. so that was validated. And so when you yeah. get these on the spot validations, they're, they're really fascinating. Yeah, yeah, and I love these out-of-body experiences. The other thing I wanted to ask you about too, Mark, is you, oh, my goodness, I've just gone blank. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, okay, I know what it is. Now, we talked about seeing apparitions or actually physically seeing um, spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, I have never, never done that, but I have seen them with the third eye. Like yes. Me too. In my head. So like you say, the little movies. And so that's another way that we can actually, we, we, we're seeing what's happening or what's happened or what's going on and, um, and, and you know, that, that sort of aspect to it. Can you, can you explain that a little bit more? Or? Sure, happy to. Uh, think of it as if you're uh, remembering where, let's say, uh, your, your significant other goes to work. You, in your head can see 
him or her, what they were wearing, walking out the door with, say, car keys and, and a briefcase or a, a laptop. You can see that vision. It's, a, it's a almost, imagine a memory that you haven't had yet. You can see it. You can paint it in your own mind's eye. But, uh, I mean, it, it's like a snapshot, but it's one that you have in your head. Um, I mean, all of us here have people that we can remember in sharp detail. If there's someone close to us, we know what they look like. We know where they are. We can describe uh, in pretty good detail what our bedrooms look like or what our car is or, you know, all of these things. It's like that. It goes beyond, okay, I'm taking a picture. It's just it's almost like a state of already knowing and you're not sure how you know it. You just know it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is how you've seen it. This is how I've seen it sometimes too, is that we, you, I just get a, like you say, a snapshot. So it's just a picture and it's like, well, what does that mean? And mm -hmm. I know that, like you say, when you meditate and then you sit in it and you sort of get an understanding, then you can actually go, okay, well, there's a picture. Let's zoom in on that area. What does that person look like? Where Where is the environment? And you can actually zoom in and it's like, like you had a photo and you're actually zooming in to mm -hmm. a photo and seeing what's going on. Is that sort of one way of you, how you do it? Yes, very much yeah. so. Uh, I will. The other thing too is that I don't always understand what I'm getting. It's like yeah. I, I will see something. All right, I'm seeing someone, a tall doorway, and I'm seeing that it looks out onto a, uh, a lake. And I don't know whose house this is, but this woman who is coming through in spirit is describing, I must, I have to think that this was a view that she enjoyed frequently. Yes. Oh, yesterday, a client. Um, I had this visual of a little white pumpkin and uh, one of her best friends, uh, this client uh, from yesterday, had a, had a friend who grew pumpkins. Uh, but even more to the point, she was up in her closet and a white pumpkin, and I, I was saying, not just pumpkins, white pumpkins. A yeah. white pumpkin fell out of the closet. It was a decoration, and that, like she almost caught it. So to me, that's a, if I'm get if I'm finding out or seeing things that only happened to you by yourself yesterday, and it reminded you of your friend, and your friend is showing me this. It, it means two things: your friend is with you, uh, even when you're not aware of it, and she's uh, perhaps in your home. I mean, she's standing next to you. I don't know if she was next to you when it happened or she can just get into your thoughts and think about how you thought it was funny that you found this white pumpkin when you were thinking of her. Yes, yes. Oh, I love that. Okay, so we've talked about the, the, that side of it. I want to get a little bit more of an understanding about the hearing side of it too yeah. because I know like, okay, so when we have these visions, like you say, r rather than actually the seeing, but the vision in our head, sometimes we sort of think, well, you know, like, like, you, said, like you said, oh, I'm going crazy. But also when you're doing the hearing, when you're, you're starting to hear, and, and one of the things that really resonated with me when I was hearing is the fact that you're hearing things, you, you, you can hear, like with my sister, when my sister passed, um, a few years later on, I could hear her voice True. very, very clearly. It was there was no doubt it was anyone else or anything else. It wasn't my imagination. It was definitely her voice because you could hear it differently. Mm -hmm. um, can you go a little bit deeper with that for us? Sure. Well, uh, there is something. I mean, when we are quite, we have. I've learned to discern the difference between my voice and the voice of someone who is speaking to me that maybe is in spirit. Um, their voice, it can, it, I almost feel like, okay, I'm in the groove. I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be. I'm getting the messages now. And I know that this isn't something, I'll hear it, it with an accent. I'll hear it sounding a little bit different than my intonation. I've actually received messages in another language that I had to phonetically explain to a client. Um, I was reading uh, for a woman who had uh, lost her daughter. And this woman was, she had an accent that sounded European. I wasn't quite sure what it was. I mean, she, she was very articulate, had a, you know, was, had a great speaking voice. But I heard something else there. And we were wrapping up and I kept hearing this odd word. I wish I could tell you what it was. But I said, 
does this word mean anything to you? And I very phonetically said, blah, blah, blah. And so she goes, you just said Christmas tree in Russian. And it's like, really? And then I realized, oh, your daughter um, passed right before Christmas. She's telling me that you did not, you haven't put up a Christmas tree since she passed. She's very adamant that she wants you to put up the Christmas tree. She wants you to start uh, enjoying the holiday season again and to know that she is with you to enjoy it. So that just made my hair stand up a little bit. It still does when I think about, I, I have no business speaking Russian. I don't know how to speak Russian, but she helped me. And the idea that it was uh, this young woman and her mother both spoke Russian and English. So the idea that they both, this was a language that they were familiar with. I've also had it where I was, um, can we talk a little bit about uh, electronic voice phenomena? Oh, yes. Okay. We certainly can, yes. Okay. <laughs> well, that's another area where it's like you think you're hearing something uh, and you can, the, the, the idea is that you ask a question. Let's say you're in a place where you don't, you think that someone in spirit might be there, ask them a question. But when you do it, have a recorder on and then give someone the opportunity to respond. So let's say you have a recorder on your phone or you have a little digital recorder. If you speak to someone and say, I would like to know, is someone here? And then be quiet and give them a chance to respond. And it's happened on countless occasions where we get a voice uh, because they, they are, and you explain to them. Also, it's interesting that someone who may have died 200 years ago may not be familiar with what a digital recorder is. So oh. just be conscious and say, look, you may not be familiar with this, but if you speak next to this little device in my hand, we can get a recording of your voice. More contemporary people are going to know what it is. So you just take the position that I'm dealing with a conscious being, the conscious being, uh, depending on when they were alive, might have a great understanding of what digital recording is, or they may not, they might not. Um, I can tell you, uh, we were in this one uh, house uh, that was actually associated with a pretty famous murder in the Los Angeles area. Um, it was, there's, uh, I don't know if you've heard of uh, Sharon Tate and the Manson family. Yes, uh, absolutely. Okay, well, we went in and I, I heard, okay, JC bring us here. And he says, I, we had big plans. And so, all right, great. I'm just saying, he says he had great, great, you know, we had big plans. And so I just go ahead and I'm doing what I'm doing. But then the, um, the camera team, or the camera crew said, you know, when you said that, we heard you say I had big plans. And then we got another voice saying I had big plans. So we hear it twice and only one, you're the only, you only say it once. So I said, well, that's JC Brink. That has to be Jay Sebring. That's why I'm, it's like he, I heard him say it and I just kind of, um, you know, you just throw these things out as you go because I don't know. All right. That's what I'm hearing. I have to give what I get. I get, yes. give what you get when you do yes, it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't, it's not about you making sense of it. It's about them making sense of it. Exactly. Yeah, it would make yeah. no sense to me. You know, yeah. it's like some of this stuff. Yeah. So. Um, before I go any further, Mark, I do want to let people know, especially on the audio, um, that if they want to connect with you, it is www.marknelsonmedium.com, okay? Yeah. Marknelsonmedium.com. So if you want to connect with Mark, jump on his website and have a look at that. Now, the next thing I want to ask, because we're starting to get a little bit low on time. So we've, we've talked about the visual aspect of, of seeing um, and vision in, this, in your psychic medium ship. Mm -hmm. We've talked about the hearing side of it. What I really want to go into now is the preparing yourself for it. We, we, you talked about meditation, and, and I know a lot of people who are meditation, but one of the things you did say when you were talking in your introduction was that you went walking. Now, mm -hmm. I refer to meditation as two forms. I refer to it as a passive meditation and an active meditation. Great. Yes, I agree. Yeah. And the active one is when you're physically doing something and so you're allowing and not something 
over the top, but just basic light walking. And it allows those intuitive messages to come through or it allows those psychic messages to come through. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and I really like that um, understanding on it. So can you just give us a little bit more? I mean, all right, you could turn around and say people go for a walk and you'll get messages, but that doesn't always happen. No. I know I did I did quite a few years of passive meditation before I could do the, the active one well if for another for want of another word but you were talking about do you have a seven minute meditation what was it seven minute take a seven minute vacation that's it seven minute vacation can you go through that a little bit with us sure well uh, we all have moments where we have kind of a uh, un- uneasy feeling about something is wrong I cannot put a finger on it um, kind of uh, undescribed anxiety about something uh, so what I started to do is that um, I wanted to meditate to see if I could determine what was bothering me, what was getting on my nerves. So, what I, But I've also said, back to the point of the seven minutes, is that a lot of people I speak to say, oh, I can't meditate. I, my head's like a ping pong ball. I'm all over the place. I can't focus uh, for any time at all. They all think you have to go up on a mountaintop or sit in a room <laughs> with a thousand candles. No. Keep no. it simple. Keep it short. Do what you can. It's almost like uh, I can. I'm I'm going to a gym and there's like there's no way I can do this. I can I can do this. Okay, I can do this. That analogy applies to meditation. So if you tell me you can't meditate for more than a minute, well, try meditating for a minute. And what that means is to be in a relaxed but alert state when you're you're letting your mind be clear. And so, okay, you did it for one minute. Can you try two minutes? Can And it's it becomes something that you build on. And so I use the seven-minute analogy. It's like if I can just get a few minutes, I can usually determine what my um, unspecified anxiety is about or if there's a message I need to receive. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, bless you. <laughs> oh, boy, that's a good one. Um, and so that's that's what I would ask people to, to try. Mm-hmm. You can't. People, oh, I can't meditate. I can't get into this. I can't do it. Stop at the I can's. Yes. Uh, try I can. How about I can do it for 30 seconds? And then you get comfortable and you build yourself up. And then once you're able to do this for a few minutes, seven minutes, you can. It's also too. It's not something you have to do. It's a vacation from everything that you're already doing. It's like mm. I need a little break. I need a little time to catch my breath, to be present to not to let go of my fears and worries. So Mm -hmm. when you do this for, say, a few minutes, you're actually giving yourself a little gift. And in that time, you can uh, see if there's a message for you. It may be simply uh, a time to clear and feel at ease. And both of those are good. By the way, you mentioned briefly about two different kinds of meditation. I usually start with, I have to just clear my head and see what's, and to, to be, present and to be clear but then I start to receive messages and so it's a it's a one two and so uh, I think that people who want to get to a point where they're working with their intuition should first try to find that clarity it's almost like I'm leaving a door open so that I can receive a message in mm-hmm. so once you do that and you create this uh, a channel a window an open door in your mind then you can receive a message. In fact, I get into more guided meditations like, okay, I've been here. Now I need to, I want to connect with someone and see if someone is available to speak with me. And through this little open channel that I've created, I then be patient and I wait for someone to come to me with, uh, say, uh, an answer, uh, a presence, or whatever it might be. Mm. Oh, yeah, I like that. I, and I, I must admit, I started off with guided meditations first to to sort of help me sit um, and 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 be present. Uh, you had something to focus on. You could listen to the, the guided meditation. Mm-hmm. But after a while, um, it was like, oh, it was just too noisy, too busy. Yeah, and I, I just yeah. needed my own space. Mm-hmm. And and the funny thing is, as you say, I, I, well, I love that terminology of the vacation because I can remember there was a time there when I'd go, okay, I got to like I went to 15 minutes, then I went to half an hour, you know, like 20 minutes, half an hour, I got to half an hour. And I remember there was a time there where I've gone, 
I, I would sit for an hour, hour and a half and think I don't want to come back. It's, it was like a vacation. Oh, it's, it was fun. Fun. it's relaxing. You yeah. like all the things that stress you out. Yeah, and when you do get these messages, it's like, oh, that was cool. But I wasn't, <laughs> getting, <laughs> I wasn't getting messages for other people so much as I was getting messages for myself, and it was it was really really enjoyable. It, it, and then again, I went then I went into more of the um, active meditation, and I could bring in messages for other people. Mm -hmm. But it's it's I guess what I wanted to say with it, you are looking at seven minutes. If you can't give yourself seven minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, and like you said, if, if it's only a minute to start with, I always focus on making it a habit rather yes. than worrying yes. about the time frame. Yeah. The other thing, too, with the seven minutes is that, to, I think, to your earlier point, that it, it, we're all busy. You know, we've yeah. got jobs, we've got work, we've got loved ones. We're trying to juggle a lot of things. If you can give yourself the gift of seven quiet minutes, the vacation, then I think that you can do a lot with it. And then from that place, perhaps you can get to 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you mm. can benefit from, whatever you need. So yeah. think of it that yeah. way. I love it. And think of it as a vacation. Give your head some space. Oh, oh my goodness. It's so yeah. wonderful. I know, I know, I know. When the, and when people do say it's hard to do, yes, it is hard to do. But you know, so is climbing mountains. So is working on internet. So is you know, there's there's yeah. lots of things that are hard to do, but they're so beneficial for us. So yeah. yeah. I mean, and this the uh, just real quickly the exercise analogy. I I I've run a couple of half marathons, and I I was asthmatic growing up. I'm still you know deal with it a little bit. But uh, Barbara, my wife said, just come with me a little bit. And so you build yourself up to it to where, you know, um, I can all of a sudden two minute meditation is easy. And then 15, seven, whatever, you, wherever you feel comfortable, then you can get there. Yeah. You just got to start. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, Mark, we are running out of time. Is there any um, last, oh, hang on before you go. Remember, marknelsonmedium.com. Jump on the yes. website. Yes. Um, <laughs> any other um the, any last la oh, sorry lasting messages you want to leave well consciousness survives the body always know that consciousness is you know if someone passes it doesn't mean that they stop caring about you it doesn't mean they stop loving you it doesn't mean they're not interested or participating in your life they are they are there they are with you and so be conscious consciousness survives the body and it, it allows you to recognize that the people you want to talk to can be there and you're not trapping them. You're not holding them. They want to be there to communicate with you because they still care. They still love you. Oh, that's great. I love that. Um, the other thing, just before I say goodbye, the other thing I've always looked at, and I'm not, I'm not a religious person, mm -hmm. but in the Bible, they say we have everlasting, uh, not love, everla uh, eternal life. Yep. And I've always looked at that spiritual side of us, that conscious side of us, that that side of us is that eternal life. The well, physical body isn't, but that conscious side of us, mm -hmm. I just feel is eternal. That's why you're saying they're still always there. They're still around. They're yep. still present if you need them. Yeah. The other thing, too, is like I, I do believe in reincarnation because yes. I've asked people in readings, um, someone's coming through in a reading, and, and I, I come from a Catholic Christian background um, yeah. all of, and I still pray regularly. But when I, um, when I talk to people, my first impression is, well, you're not in hell. You're not in heaven. Where are you? And they tell me I'm in between. You're yes. in between lives. Okay. That explains. All right. So that's all I need to know. And that are you planning on coming back? Not right away. Sometimes they want to learn more. They want to. Think it's here's a great analogy. I'll leave you with this: is that uh, when you're in high school or whatever, whatever your like higher education, often there is a study associated with a lab. The study you listen to a lecture, and then in the lab you try to practice what you've learned. So mm. I've always felt that the study is in between. I mean the the uh, the lecture is our in between time. But the lab is when you come to earth and you practice and you figure out, does this work? Can I be uh, loving and forgiving? 
Can I deal with hardship? All of that. And so it's this lab, the learning versus lecture, lab, hands-on versus the, the other. Yeah, and, that's, and that's exactly how I look at it. That is, so that, that's the theory, and then they've actually got to put it into practice. We can learn how to ride a bike. We can read all about it or how to swim, read all about it and get all that understanding. But until we actually do it, you really don't know how to swim. You really no. don't know how to ride a bike. No. Yeah. And so, yeah. that, and so that's what we learn. That's what we do. Mm, so. mm, I love it. But we do have to go. Thank you so much for being on the show, Mark. It's been really good. I look forward to seeing Barbara next week or the next couple of weeks. Well, Susan, this has been fun. I hope I can. We can. I'm just. I feel like I'm just getting started talking with you. I know. So, I know. This we didn't so get into psychometry this time, so maybe next time. Oh, we forgot. Yeah, didn't get into psychometry. Might have to. Might have to book you in again because I, I. I'd love that understanding of it too. Well, I'm having fun, so let's try again, all right? Okay, cool. Well, stay there, and I'll do the goodbyes. Hang on, I'll have to move that. Hey, guys, that was fantastic. Jump on, on Mark's website. So Mark Nelson, he is going under Mark Christopher Nelson, but at the moment it's marknelsonmedium.com. You'll be able to find it on there. Um, thank you so much for being on the show. Share, subscribe, like. I would really be happy with that. And um, remember, if you do want to learn to connect with your intuition, jump on intuitivenature.com.au or um, follow me on some of the socials because I think I'm just about everywhere. It's quite embarrassing when you have to be on all those socials. I prefer the podcast, I have to be honest, because um, I get to talk to beautiful people like Mark and I'm going to look forward to talking to Barbara soon too. So make sure you, you subscribe to the show so you don't miss out on it. But that's me for now. I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you next week. Bye for now.